Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I've been informed that I have not played with Satellar Knights since the Inov support was released in the form of uh, Bat Teller Knight, um, the Dark One, Dark Teller Knight, Balatimus or whatever. Uh, the card that essentially lets you go into Trevair off of just an Altair summon, because you go Altair, bring back the Neb. The Neb searches for just any card that you discard, like an Anunkul High, and then you, uh, you discard that in Detached Material off of Dark Teller Knight. Uh, Balatimus or whatever its fucking name is, uh, Batlamus, um, to uh, make your Trevair. So it gives the deck a nice demographic of like what you're capable of doing now, uh, in the aspect of being able to uh, being able to just make Trevair super easily without having to like be reliant on looping Call of the Haunteds and stuff like that because you're capable of just doing Trevair plays off the rip with just a one card Altair play. Uh, but essentially, this is Teller Knight Demise. This is a deck that I played a little bit in the past, last year in 2016. Uh, I haven't played it since, and I actually played this deck for my round one of the Yugi Tuber Grand Championship thing. The only difference was that I had to take the dimensional barriers out, and instead, I believe I played like Mirror Forces in their place. Uh, but I swapped them back in for this video. But this is the deck that I played for round one of the Yugi Tuber Grand Championship thing because I felt like it was a, a solid enough deck to just go and just be like, look, we're going to go into this blind and we're just gonna try and buster our way through round one and see if it works out well enough and so I decided I wanted to play this deck for uh, for a video utilizing uh, dimensional barrier back in the main but also mainly just going with uh, Batlamus because this card is actually just really good in terms of what it allows the deck to do because it gives you access into essentially one card Trevair uh, plays like I already said but so I'm not gonna waste too much more time talking about this deck there are definitely some changes that could be made to the deck going down the line uh, you could definitely do things like maybe even just cut Demise. Demise may just not even be optimal for this deck anymore. Uh, and maybe like play triple Vega or something and start doing the thing that people were doing in Necros format where they tried to open Vega to Neb uh, every single game so they could Levolve all chain, send like T-King to Grave, and then call the Haunted in on your opponent's turn. But in essence, this would be Vega for Deneb to go into a turn one Trevair to take cards out of your opponent's hand and then set up like Call of the Haunted plays and stuff like that. Uh, there's definitely a bunch of different things that this deck could do as far as shifting card quantities around uh, to make things uh, a little bit better suited for the format or whatever. But So let's just not waste any more time and let's just jump straight into the game and see how the deck performs uh, in practice, shall we? Look at all these traps. Let's see if we draw any of them because I've been having bad luck with this deck recently where I just don't draw trap cards or card of demise. So let's see if that trend uh, continues itself, shall we? Let's just jump straight into the game. All right, so hopefully this goes well. I need to win rock, paper, scissors, or else this is going to be a problem. And it looks like it's going to be a problem. No! Wait, never mind. We've got double dark hall. <laughs> so maybe we can work with this. Okay, he's playing Sylvans again. Stag is just apparently this dude that just loves to play plant decks. He loves to play aromas and loves to play Sylvans, apparently. I mean, I can't blame him. I like Sylvans, too. But uh, as far as, um, as, as competitive-wise... They don't really stack up unless you get super lucky, uh, but that's fine because I'm playing. I'm literally playing uh, Stell. Why is his internet connect? This is he's the only person that I have this problem with, um, where his internet connection is apparently slow or something to where the pictures just don't load in very quickly on my end. And it's literally only when I play against him that this issue arises. So every other person I play against, the pictures load in immediately. <laughs> so it's definitely a problem in internet connection between me and him, but uh, overall. Like, it's just a problem. <laughs> but so, okay, if he makes uh, Draco Sack here off of, like, Copy Plant and Sage Koya, I'm going to be able to go double Dark Hole and just clear the board. That's pretty simple and pretty easy, right? Uh, but he milled Dandelion and the Princess Pro Oh, he's doing Ultimize Zulkin. Okay, that's actually also fair. I actually never considered that as an option. Because the last time I played Sylvans, right? The last time I played Sylvans was in 2014 when Soul Charge... Well, no, that's a lie. That's actually just a lie. Um, I played Sylvans in 2014 when Soul Charge was at 3, but then I also played Sylvans again when Rose Lover and Rose Paladin were released, because with those cards, uh, with those cards we got access into, um, into, uh, into being able to Pendulum, not Pendulum, Jesus Christ, it was middle of Necro's format, middle of 2015. I'm trying to remember, uh, where, where this stuff happened, so Spicy Dark Hole incoming! We. <laughs> God, um, but so we're just gonna we're just gonna do this. We're we're just gonna do this. This is all we're gonna do. This is how we do things. Uh, so this will activate. Searching for Altair. <laughs> Fucking hell! Uh, what an interesting interaction. Just dark hole game. 
Um, I get to attack with these first, and then I can make uh, then I can make Trevor. Uh, Jesus Christ, what a what an interaction! Dark hole of the board. Uh, but so when Rose uh, Lover came out, uh, the deck was really cool. Soul Charge was at one, but the deck was super cool because I think we still had like three emptiness at the time, or maybe we only had one. But still, the deck was capable of like essentially searching it by going Orea for like seven or eight, um, and digging into your deck after you've drawn a bunch of shit like a shit ton of cards. And essentially, like it was just super, uh, it was super good and super optimal uh, for like how the deck needed to be played. But uh, so what we ended up with was we ended up with a really cool deck that uh, that was uh, playable, and I played that for a short period of time. But uh, essentially, what we uh, what we have now is we have Sylvans that have Princess Sprite, uh, and we have Triple Lone Fire, and we have all that stuff. Okay, so he's got the Field Spell in his hand still. Um, need to remember that. Need to remember that in some capacity. That is an alarm that is set on my phone, and I do not know why it bypasses the fact that I put my entire phone on silent. Interessante. Uh, but so I'm just gonna end my turn here. No fear. He's got a field spell in his hand. I just dark hold for four, for five. <laughs> what an interaction. Uh, I was worried about having to deal with the Draco sack. It's like shit. I'm gonna have to throw both of my dark holes at the Draco sack. Ah, he draws Soul Charge for turn. What an amazing duelist. What the what an amazing man. <laughs> God damn! What a fucking top deck! How does this man draw Soul Charge? This is literally the second game we've played where he's playing Sylvans. This is the second game we've played. Period. He opened Lone Fire Soul Charge the last game that we played where he played Sylvans. And now he just... I'm losing! Better top deck Soul Charge! So he does. <laughs> Got me. Um, but so Soul Charge for three here. Uh, he gets to mill two... The Flower Knight, does it do anything? It puts a Sylvan card from Grave onto the top of the deck, right? Or, oh, puts a Sylvan card from deck on top of your deck. Um, that's cool. Uh, but so now he gets the Field Spell, but there's nothing really that he gets to do to... What did he put on top of his deck? That's what I want to know. Um, he put a Peacekeeper on top of his deck, and then he activated this so that it could mill in the end of the turn. I see. Too bad I'm just going to start Trevor looping you. Um, or wait, Princess Sprite, the new card! Uh, excavate the top card of your deck, if it was a spell or trap, add it to your hand, otherwise send it to the graveyard. Okay. Um. And then, uh, then it's got the Monster Reborn effect. Okay. So this, this is alright. It only targets Sylvans in your graveyard and special summons them. So that's a bit unfortunate. That's a bit sad. Um, if this could bring back any plant, then hoo 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 hoo, baby. Uh, there'd probably be some sort of infinite loops or whatever. Uh, but so these aren't gonna do much in the context of how they're going to interact. I could just go ahead and dark hole the board again. <laughs> and then put this back in his hand. Um, I think I'm going to, actually. Yeah, I'm just going to dark hole the board again. My Trevor will trigger. Um, like, we'll just do this. So I'll get Vega. And Vega will special the Altair. And then uh, Altair will special summon the Deneb. And then I can make Trevor, but... It's uh, more damage to just attack. It's actually just game here uh, if I just attack now. So I think that's just what we'll do. That's This deck is so dumb. Like, the fact that Trevor has these interactions. Uh, Trevor might actually be a three of in this extra deck as well. Um, because I always find myself having one die or go to grave off of um, off of being overlaid under diamond. And the loop just doesn't establish itself. Uh, but, I mean, hey. Who knows? But this is 29. So this is just game. Dark holes for Jame. Uh, this deck is very built towards uh, towards potentially going second because I've got triple board wipes in it <laughs> because I can card a demise into these cards and uh, and they're free. They're free interactions, free cards. But goddamn, this man he draws Soul Charge like it's his fucking job. I can't believe that. <laughs> I can't believe he draws Soul Charge so much. That card's at one. How do you draw Soul Charge so much when it's literally? He has a 100% success rate as far as I've seen at drawing Soul Charge in games. Thank God he didn't have Lone Fire during this one. Ugh. But yeah, so that, that game was very uneventful. I mean, Dark Hole for five, and then just Traver him a couple of times. Um, I guess I guess it just shows that like his, the deck is super, the Sylvan deck is super fragile to uh, to things. If you're not just able to literally just amount just a massive amounts of stuff uh, going in your favor, because like I didn't even have a single trap that game. And the entire point of my deck is to win with traps. But I had board wipes. And those, I guess, are just better than traps in this situation. I don't know. Let me know what you guys' opinion on that is in general. But 
Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon. At the end of this month, I'm giving away a box of Maximum Crisis when it hits stores, so it'll be like the first or second week of May. I'll be giving a box of Maximum Crisis away to anyone who's supported me on Patreon uh, through the raffle giveaway system. So if you're interested in that, then definitely go check out the Patreon. If you want to get on my personal Discord server, and play me for games, which is where Stag came from, and also my Discord server is often just really lit up with a bunch of random chat and nonsense from me and the 15 other people that are in there, then definitely go check out the Patreon as well. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They're a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. Definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.